Extra, Extra, written by Robert E. Sherwood. It was night, and the rain was falling in big, heavy drops. Many people began to run; others just walked on calmly, not caring if the rain made them wet. On the street corner, two men were trying to sell an extra printing of their newspaper. They were shouting, "Extra!" Extra, evening paper. A running woman stopped and bought one. She opened it and placed it on her head for protection. Then she ran again. Down the street lived Mister Waden. He was sitting in his chair reading an earlier newspaper. He heard the two men shout, but decided it was too wet to go out to buy the, the extra. Still, there seemed to be a threat in their voices, a warning of tragedy of disaster. Mrs. Whedon heard the man shout too. She ran out of the kitchen where she was cooking dinner. Roy, the men are shouting extra, she said. Yes, I heard them, Emmy. Can everyone hear them? Mr. Whitten's attempt to be funny was not enjoyed by his wife. She walked to the window, opened it, and felt the ring with her hand. She put her head out of the window to see the newspaper man. Roy, something terrible must have happened. Does your newspaper say anything about it? This is a new newspaper, Amy, and it's guaranteed not to have any news at all. Again, Mrs. Whedon didn't see anything funny, and again she said, "Roy, something terrible must have happened." Roy Whedon felt the anger grow in his wife. He wished she would say, "Now, why don't you go and get a newspaper? Go buy the extra." But she never would. She always tried to urge him to do things without nearly asking him to do them. She tried again. Roy, something awful must have happened. Roy moved in his chair and felt a, a little guilty, but he didn't want to go out in the rain. Oh, Emmy, he said, these extra papers never printed anything new. They just shout to make you feel they are. Aren't you going to see? No, I don't think I will, Emmy. If something has happened, we can learn about it tomorrow. You are so lazy, Roy Waden. You just sit there night after night after night. What do you read anyway? Nothing. You just sit there and look at your full newspaper. Probably the death news. When something important happens, you don't care. Roy Waden felt his own anger grow, but Emily still talked. I guess you want me to go out in the rain, me, with all the work I have to do, dinner to cook, dishes to wash, baby to feed. Well, all right, I'll go, and you can sit there like king and rest. Roy Whedon knew when he was defeated. The same old debate had been going on for seven years. If only she would change her tack, but she never would. First, she tested his feelings with a question: If he didn't lift his head from his newspaper and look at her, she became angry. She would call him lazy, and then say the same old words: "I'll do it myself." He was tired of the same old words night after night. Seven years of listening to an angry woman would tire any man. He recognized the defeat, and he acted. He threw his newspaper to the floor and stood on his feet. He walked into the bedroom for his coat. He saw little Conrad, his son, sleeping in his bed. Above, on the wall, was a photograph of the Taj Mahal. He looked along at the picture. I've always wanted to see the Taj Mahal, he thought. If I could only see that, and Singapore, the west coast of Africa, and Roy, Roy Waden, 
Are you going or I have to go? I'm going, dear. His voice sounded as if he meant forever. He put down his coat, kissed little Conrad goodbye, and looked at the Taj Mahal once more. He turned out of the bedroom and went into the dark rain. A ship began blowing its foghorn down in the bay. He remembered the Taj Mahal. Then, without even looking back towards the house, he walked with his short steps towards the ship. Today, twelve years later, the sun is shining. Mrs. Whedon is married to another man, a Mr. Berkshaw. Her name's now Mrs. Whedon Berkshaw. She's sitting in front of her house, looking at the garden. Her thoughts turn to her first husband, Roy. She had not seen or heard from him for twelve years. She wondered what she was doing. She rose from her chair and went inside. She saw her son, Conrad, sitting in her chair reading a book. Her thoughts returned to her first husband, and she became angry again. What are you doing in the house on such a nice day? Go outside and get some fresh air. Conrad went outside and began to bounce a ball on the road. A little later, a strange man came toward him. The stranger asked, Does Mrs. Berkshaw live here? The man stood looking carefully at his boy, then said, I used to know your mother before I went to sea. Just then, Conrad's mother came out of the house. She almost dropped to the ground. She walked towards her first husband. So, you are a seaman now. Well, you look like nothing. I always knew you would never be successful in life. I think you're right, Amy, he said. Tell me something, Roy. Why did you do it? Why did you leave me, me, your wife? I don't really know, Amy. It was raining that night. I heard a ship blow its foghorn on the river. It sounded as if it were calling me. So you left me for a ship's foghorn. Well, I knew you'd be all right. Your mother had money. Why did you come back here? What do you want? Money? But you won't get any, so you can leave right now. Don't worry, my ship sails at six o'clock. She saw Roy's ship in her mind, and she laughed to herself. It must be an old ship, she thought. Well, why did you come back? I just wanted... A- I just wanted to see Conrad. Amy grew angry. Well, you have seen him, so why don't you leave? All right, Amy. She watched him walk away from her. Suddenly, the past returned. She remembered the ring night he left. He hadn't even said goodbye just as he left now without a goodbye. She remembered the two newspaper men shouting, Extra, extra. Suddenly, all the old feelings came back. Her heart and mind began to leave her first marriage again. She grew more and more angry. And before she knew what had happened, she heard her voice shouting, Roy, Roy Whedon, come here this minute. Roy Whedon obeyed the demand without thinking. I'm coming, dear, and he walked toward her. Roy Whedon, what was printed in the extra that rainy night you left me? You remember the night the two men shouted extra all night? Roy thought a minute. He knew he had forgotten. He began to smile secretly inside his heart. Then, for one of the few times in his life, he told her a lie. Oh, it was nothing, Amy. I think the weatherman said it was going to rain for four days more, or something like that. Amy lost control of herself. For twelve years, he had been gone and hadn't even missed her. This man had wasted the set of the best years of her life, and now he wouldn't even tell her what was in the newspaper. 
she began to shout at him. But a royal widow, seaman, and a former husband didn't even hear her. He stood tall and straight and felt it happy. He turned and left her and walked away toward his ship. Mm-hmm.